Hi everybody, Daniel here from Denmark. I'm a Danish snooker champion and this is my new snooker channel on YouTube called Mad About Snooker. So, the dress up. Yeah, I haven't played tournament as you probably haven't in a long, long time and uh, I don't really like wearing this clothing, I'm not gonna lie. So, to get used to it again, I have uh, taken it on today so I can actually get ready for Q school because there, there's no mercy. You're playing in this dress when you get there. And uh, also, I bought a new camera and uh, Lavalier microphone so I can give you some proper quality for YouTube. And uh, yeah, in this first introductory video, I just wanted to show you how a 147 is made in this constellation called the X lineup. Perfect, nice pot, center of the pocket. Bad position on the black though. Should have had a little bit more backspin on it to get further up here. Still all right though. Should be able to do this with backspin and left hand spin. Yeah, hit that sweet. That as soon as I was about to pull back. That's a nice feeling when you actually know that you've hit it well even before you've actually hit it. So. The point is to always land high on the reds so you can get down towards the blacks again. And that's what I call a positive angle. If you land too low on the reds, that's a negative angle because you're actually going up towards the blue and further if you land on that sort of position. So the point is always try and land high on the reds, get down on the black again. A little bit sharp this one, but I should manage. Decent. And now I can play this with backspin. Come out again for the reds. So here, choice of two. Always try to leave yourself in a position where you can play more than one ball. In this case here, I can drop this in. It's a little bit tougher. Uh, and position is almost guaranteed as well. So I'm going to try and take the slightly tougher shot, the lower of the two reds there. Come a little bit low on the black, but should still be okay. Should avoid that red over there. I actually put that one with inside English to avoid that lowest red. So that was left hand spin from my view angle over there. Worked well, nice on this road, just follow through. Fortunately, I'm almost straight. I can just push it around into a cushion with the right hand side, I think. Yeah, and then the spin bites. Not enough though, I want it to be a little bit high on that red, of course. I could stay down there on the black. In this case, I've got to play a slightly tougher shot. Unless I feel I can actually pull it back and just hold the cue ball here. But I'm just risking snookering myself on that red, so I think I've got to play the tougher red. Only just managed to get on the black. Yeah, that's all right. Saved it. Perfect around the two cushions. Now I can get rid of that lowest one. Very nice. So, well, I say nice, and I actually end up completely straight on the black. So I need a good backspin shot here, tiny bit of low hand, low right hand I should say. Perfect. And like I talked about earlier, if I didn't, I'll just repeat it. The four reds around the pink, it's always nice to get rid of as soon as possible 
because they ruined the positional play around the black spot a tiny bit. So I always like to get rid of those. Done all right there. Top spin, one tip of left hand spin to check it. Or for it to actually follow the natural angle off the cushion rather, rather than breaking it. And uh, now we're, at, we're in an area where I could possibly start to think about taking the reds into the center pocket Especially because when you're playing from the black to come up here and land on this red that's right next to the pink, if you come too far, then you're really not on anything. So by removing that one red, I'm making the positional play around the pink and the reds next to it a tiny bit easier. I'm gonna take this one into the center. Nice, good high angle here still. Try and come up here in an area of two. Perfect. Very nice stun angle from this one. The lowest of the reds into the corner and be nice on the black again. Now that's actually pretty perfect to go around in two cushions and land in this area of two where I can put either red to the center pocket or red to the corner. I'd really like to get rid of that one because it's obstructing the path from the black for future positional shots. So I hope I'll land on that one. Had a slight kick there, but it's okay actually. Cube has landed perfectly in that area of two that I was talking about. That little triangular triangular area sort of. I can take the red into the center pocket if I want to, but really to ease positional shots from the black, I've got to take this one into the corner. Come down so I can get the black into the corner, come into the cushion and out again, area of two into the center pocket. I could possibly stun it as well, but that's a, that's a thing I have to decide now, actually. I'll take this in with top spin into the cushion. A tiny bit of right hand side just to make sure that the cue ball didn't get too far up to get too much here so that that would have been a tougher shot. So that's perfect. I'll stun that in. Tiniest bit of backspin to get back on the black. Yeah, that's about perfect. So I've actually gone against my own rules here because I don't like having the reds near the pink as the last ones. I try to take them as a first resort if I can. So I've got to think here what is the most sensible thing to do. And I do believe that that is playing on, yeah, what to do actually. If I stun it and get out here and I don't land perfect on that red, it's completely ruined. But having these two reds on the same side is very dangerous towards the end of the break. So possibly the better thing to do is to pot the black, get the cue ball out here and take the red into the center pocket. It's tougher, but it makes the ending of the break a bit easier for me. Yep, just about that. Natural angle to get down on the black again. Although it does look it's one of them angles where you end up kind of like straight on the black. So I've got to hope I don't land completely straight. But don't sacrifice the pot for position and I've done okay. I'm not straight on the black, so that's absolutely fine still. 
All right, now it's a no-brainer. Like I say, play in an area of two, so this means get the cue ball over here. Preferably a little bit higher on that one to get back for the black. Let's see what happens. Good there. Missed, right? And that's actually perfect because it brings the cue ball back here because of the angle being a negative angle going away. So this means about here, and you can get out for the black and land high on the black, so it's easier to get it out for a position for the last two reds. So that's what I'm gonna try and do now. Yeah, perfect on the black. Well, could have made it a bit easier. Now I'm forced into playing slightly of a, like a, not really backspin, but a kill stun shot or whatever you call it. Just a little bit below center, right hand spin and get out in this area. So now you really are playing for an area of one and that makes it extra exciting. Obviously you gotta calm your nerves before you do the shot. Play that nice, no I thought so, yeah, had a bit of a bounce off the cushion, so got to play it really well into the center pocket to keep it alive. Good thing about this is when I pot it, I'm going to skid off the pink and get down towards here, so I could very well land on the black perfectly if I play this at the right pace. That's actually worked out perfect. Wow. Okay, I've put the pink on the cushion almost, but I've had worse shots finish off maximums. So let's try and stun this black in. Nice. Perfect on the red. At least angle wise, a little bit too far away, but still okay. I'll roll this in and I have to obviously make sure now that I either land low on the black or make sure that if I land high on it that I do not collide with the pink. I play the position to go up for the yellow. So what to do? Okay, I'm gonna land low on it, I think. Yeah, actually a wee bit too low. But that's okay, I've got enough cue power and a good tip on the cue if I want to do it as backspin. It's also a natural angle to play it, come out here. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. It's a bit more of the natural. The tiniest touch of right hand side there and it's carried it down perfectly to the yellow. So now, what to do with the pink? I'm gonna try and see if I can play the positions correctly now on the low colors so that I end up being on the brown, stun that in, end as near straight as possible as I can, probably around in this area. So I can then pot the blue, either develop it, depends on the angle I get on the blue, or just roll over here and take it with the rest. Let's see how this goes. Add it nice and green. Pinch the pocket a little bit for position. On the brown. A little bit straighter than I would have wanted, but no, I think it's actually perfect. Let's see. Central ball as the sirens go outside. I've gotten a little bit too much angle on the blue there, so that's not going to work out the way I wanted it. Let's 
see if I can play position in behind it, two cushions. Or just one. You know what, that might actually work out. Wow, lucky. Let's see if I can complete it though. Get in. Now, all the practice in the world can't really get you ready for black for 147. Just stay still. That's the number one rule on these. And there it is. Right in the heart of the pocket. Welcome to Mad About Snooker on YouTube. That was more tough than it looked. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back very, very soon with some more videos, but for now, I'll leave up maybe a couple of videos of some previous practice, and then I'll go to Q School and hopefully make it there. So until next time, see you guys, and uh, rate, comment, subscribe. <laughs>